Good morning. Yeah, it's still morning. Um, so I'll briefly just share about uh, what the Medical Students Association of Kenya has been doing in open access. And, uh, it will it take so long. It will have uh, lots of pictures. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, so that's the outline. Advocacy, past examples, what we've been doing during the Open Access Week, and just a small conclusion. These are quotes we got uh, from uh, available resources when we were looking at uh, presentations done in past conferences and meetings. Um, that OA publications are those made freely available online to anyone, anywhere, with no charges imposed for access. Um, there is an issue of unrestricted immediate access. But from the previous uh, presentation I had, uh, there is no set definition on open access, and so I'm eager to learn about the discussion as well. Um, clearly, making works free to read has a huge impact on the dissemination of knowledge. And so um, last uh, Saturday during the Open Access Week, we had a training and one of our trainers uh, from the association, she's called Mary Iwaret, um, a third year medical student. Um, this, uh, this is one of our slides on, on why students need open access and in a nutshell, it's something that is uh, obvious to us. Uh, for us to have a complete education, uh, for us to get all the information that we need to graduate. I'm a, I'm a medical student, and we need um, access to information for us to be well trained. And yet, then again, if our professors can't access this information, then they wouldn't be able to relate to us. When we're searching for papers, uh, we need to freely access them online. Um, and then again, um, depending on which uh, setup you're in, if you're in a smaller institution uh, which does not have big libraries uh, uh, and facilities, then if you have good internet and access to information, then it really doesn't matter what school you go to, as long as you can access that information. Um, yeah, and also, that's uh, a small but then when you're, after you're done with your school and you're no longer subscribed to the, uh, to the partnerships and the projects that uh, are, are, are available to schools when you're having graduated from school, then you can still access information just um, as a doctor or as a member of the public. So students will need open access not only while they're in school but also after after school. Now, advocacy campaign, um, uh, I learned about open access movement uh, uh, recently. Uh, we, had, we were at a meeting where the, a policy was being passed uh, in, the, in the International Federation of Medical Students Association uh, by uh, one of the directors uh, who advocates for open access among students. And I had to check up uh, what advocacy means from Wikipedia, and I'm told it's a political process by an individual or a large group which aims to influence public policy and resource allocation decisions. And so um, there's a lot of talking, negotiations uh, to have uh, these policies implemented at the institution level and at government level. And so uh, in the Rights to Research Coalition, um, we have those couple of steps, so they are biased to that uh, coalition. Uh, we had to hear about it, then we joined, we signed to be members of the coalition, then we joined as a national body, that's the Medical Students Association of Kenya, and we involved our member chapters. I'll tell you about that in the next slide. Um, and then we are also involving others. We're working closely with our library, which is way ahead. Um, that's at the University of Nairobi in open access. Um, so our association has these committees. We don't only deal with uh, 
our our activities are mainly geared to uh, get us out of the class setup. Um, and so we have activities on medical education, professional exchange, and that's student exchange programs, research exchange, which is just starting up, um, public health, reproductive health, and AIDS and human rights and peace. And so under the research exchange arm, that's how we are trying to tackle the open access initiatives. And we, we draw membership from the University of Nairobi, uh, Kenyatta University, um, Egerton University, and Moy University. And these are the medical schools um, in those universities. So we have done advocacy before um, during health days like World Cancer Day, uh, brain cancer campaigns, uh, uh, sorry, brain awareness campaigns um, dur uh, during the uh, Brain Awareness Week by IBRO, International Brain Research Organization. Um, NCD campaigns tackling uh, chronic uh, diseases which are increasing in Africa. And uh, recently, that's in last year, we were part of the Open Access Week at our university. And that's one of our student leaders giving a, a poem at, uh, at a workshop uh, of the same. And so um, our activities on open access uh, began, as I said, in, in Copenhagen uh, in August last year when we, we were part of the members of the Student Association, the Federation of Students Association that signed an open access policy. Then we participated in the Open Access Week, which we also doing this year because our week hasn't ended. Uh, the activity is still happening uh, this week. Um, um, we had invited uh, members to, uh, we were hoping to have uh, a session at the African Regional Meeting, which was held in Nairobi last year on open access, but that did not take place, but we pushed it to Tanzania um, uh, this, this year in 2012. Um, and then recently we had the University Management Board workshop the middle, that's my principal for the College of Health Sciences. And we're trying to uh, encourage them to adopt open access policies, which they have uh, passed. Um, so what tools do you use? We use social media, Facebook, webcast, blogs, the camp campus campaigns, as I've said. Um, we haven't uh, tried going mainstream media, but we learned of an association that uh, did that. Um, I can't remember which, which news weekly uh, they, they published in, but they were encouraging us to do the same. Uh, writing letters, um, attending such meetings, having trainings and workshops. So that's a blog on the INASP website, just uh, telling, uh, uh, the, uh, just giving the steps of how we got involved and, and such and so on and so forth. So if you go to uh, the INASP, dot info blog site you read more about our association and our open access initiatives and we also uh, had the webcast uh, this was hosted at the rights to research coalition just telling more of the activities that we did um maybe this is the second last slide so we are part of the coordinating committee uh, for africa europe and middle east in the rights to research coalition and we are we are trying as, as, as more advocacy takes place in Europe and in the Americas, uh, we in Africa would want to join in as the advocacy is going on. Um, we played a small part. Um, there were petitions which were being signed uh, in the States for uh, an open access policy uh, by the Obama government. Um, and we, we participated uh, in, in just signing up on, on the same. Um, but uh, with, uh, with growing interest uh, in Africa because of the limited resources, we want to be uh, involved uh, at such a level. Um, and so the letters we, we have seen, uh, students associations which are written, that's by AMSA in America, that's by a pharmaceutical um, uh, association, a professional association, um, and so we would also uh, probably go that way, um, involve our government, 
uh, by writing letters on the same. Um, so in summary, um, we hope to, uh, through networks that we, we have made in meetings uh, and in workshops and trainings, we hope to uh, start their steps. Uh, we, are, we are geared towards that uh, uh, to have an open access journal uh, uh, that is student-led um, with authors being the students. Uh, and we'd like to learn more from, from this audience on the same. Um, we'll continue with the Open Access Week. Uh, we, are just, we are still going on with activities this year. We we'll hope to participate next year. Um, and we'll do more advocacy as we get to learn more about how to go about the, the, the movement. And so on the right hand side is just one of the workshops, a program we were having. Um, that's in August, but there was a meeting which was going on in, in, on Friday. And I think uh, we ended on a good note uh, talking about plagiarism and how open access would be a good tool to curb that. Um, and so we know that open access is important. And since as students, we are the beneficiaries of open access, we want to be involved in the advocacy. Um, those are the references, Wikipedia, right, research, and the INASP, right? Uh, those are posters I got from the Biomed Central <laughs> website. Um, and then I'd like to acknowledge uh, Nick Shockey, the director of, right, of, yeah, of Rights to Research Coalition, director, Ann Powell from INASP, um, the IFMSA uh, Regional Coordinator for Africa, um, Rosemary Otando, a uh, librarian from the University of Nairobi, and the AFO Kenya director, and my dean, uh, Professor Charles Mwando, family and friends. Uh, Santi Sana. <laughs>